Hi everybody, Bill from Colorado 4x4 Van, and I've been uh, watching a lot of videos lately of uh, stories of how people came to be with their vans and what led them up to this, and even though I'm not a van dweller per se, I use my van as much as possible, and I've put a lot of time into building it. Um, my situation has changed um, in the last eight years to where... Um, that's not, I don't foresee myself ever going there and unless something went south in a hurry with my personal life. I don't foresee ever having to live in my van. Um, we've got a good life and we're very fortunate in that. And uh, we work hard, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in my current situation. But it was not always this way. Um, but I figured I'd go through what led me to where I am and how I got to uh, where the love of vans came from. And I've noticed a lot of other uh, personalities on YouTube have similar uh, thoughts and philosophies and, uh, and uh, moments in their lives that led them to where, to being in vans. And they, a lot of them sound very familiar, related if not directly the same in many cases. Um, but my first RV experience growing up with my grandparents had uh, a Class C RV. It was a Dodge chassis, Class C, uh, 70s, and uh, it was new then. Um, and we go out sometimes in the summer. They take me, take the kids, my sisters and I out, my cousins, uh, and we go out in the winter up to a ski area here in Colorado. And I always remember riding up above the cab, looking out that window, looking out the front, and that was. I thought that was the most awesome thing ever. <clears throat> and my first van trip came when I was about eight years old. And my uncle had a Dodge Tradesman, Tradesman van, uh, 1972, I think. And he had a bed in the back and a cabinet on the side. Nothing too fancy. But uh, we took a trip. My uncle drove, my dad, my mom, my sisters and I, and my aunt, I believe. And we drove up to Butte, Montana from here to visit another uncle that lived up there in that van. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So that was my original introduction to RVs. And uh, I guess it's kind of stuck with me because I've always liked them, even though I haven't had the means always to uh, do the things I'm doing now. It's uh, something that's always stuck with me. And as soon as I got the chance to go back that direction, I jumped on it. <laughs> But even when I was little growing up, I always lived, being I have two sisters, I always was the only boy, so I got the, the leftover rooms. If we lived in a, we moved around a lot, a lot when I was younger, um, lived in Alaska for six years, um, East Coast, here in Colorado for nine years, um, and usually when we went somewhere, my sisters would share a room, my parents would have a room, and I'd get whatever there was left. So. Uh, I remember one duplex in Alaska, I lived in a room that was the closet underneath the stairs. There was a door and the underneath the stairs closet, that was my room. And I was fine with that. I, I was happy with that. Another house, there was a room that didn't have any doors. That was like a pool. Maybe you could fit a pool table in a smaller room and that was my room. So these are kind of things that I was just used to. And uh, so small quarters has never bothered me. Um, Actually, my van that I have now is quite luxurious compared to a lot of places that I've called a room, a living quarter. So, and so that's by design, but um, it's also bigger. I mean, a lot of people look at it as being very small. And I, I, I think uh, a lot of that is mental. Um, it has everything you need, and it, it just depends. I'll get into my house experience a little bit later, and I never used all of my house. I. Um, I used a couple rooms, the rest of it mostly went unused. When I had friends over, yeah. But I, most of the time, I just never got used and it seemed to me like such a waste of, uh, of space to have that much room that you just don't need and don't use. Um, but in my 20s and 30s, um, I did a lot of backpacking and a lot of traveling. Um, went to college late because I, uh, didn't want to be in school anymore when I left home. So I worked for a while, but I went back to college late and I got into traveling and a lot of backpacking in the meantime. Um, and I think that backpacking 
especially when you're overseas, living out of a backpack, you, uh, you, you learn a lot about discipline of having what you need and not using more than you need and not taking more than you need because you got to carry everything that you have. <laughs> the first few backpack trips out, even just local uh, hiking, backpack camping, you, uh, you pack way too much. And uh, no matter how much you study, you think you need more than you do. And you find out pretty quickly what you need and what you don't need. And uh, you quickly begin to scale down everything that you take. Now, backpacking in Europe, much different than camping. Obviously, you don't have to carry things like tents and sleeping bags, things like that, that take up a lot of space. But um, either way, you learn you're carrying water, you're carrying food, you're carrying things that you need. And it teaches you a lot of discipline about getting the most out of everything that you have. And I think that correlates directly over to van living, uh, small RV living, because you don't have a lot of space, so you don't pack things you don't need. Um, you don't tend to gain a lot of things in there that uh, it's just the basics that you really need and a few extra little items, but mostly it's just what's necessary. And uh, it's funny how you don't seem to miss so many of the things that you have when you're gone. When I'm gone in the van, I don't miss, I miss home, but I don't, it's just, it's just different. And I feel very at home with the little that I have. Um, and I traveled quite a bit. Um, I can show you a map over here. I keep track of most of the places I've been up here, but you know, been to Europe five times, Australia a couple times, New Zealand, China, uh, drove the Alcan when I was 11, lived in Alaska for those six years, so saw a lot of Alaska, Hawaii, been to Mexico five times, um, done ATV riding in Baja, California, seen a lot of the United States, um, been up to Vancouver area four or five times, and done one of those trips on motorcycle, so that's a whole nother um, way of living that's... Uh, small and compact and in all my travels um, sorry, you have to pack light I mean I went from backpacking where you carry light for a reason you're carrying things every day storing and moving them around um, graduated from there to motorcycles where you have a little more room a couple of saddlebags plus a backpack maybe and it does most of the carrying work for you, so you can take a little more, but you're still really limited on space. And now that I'm back into the van, um, it's a little bit more, even more than that, and you can carry even more comfort type items. You, as I said in my second video, the reason I began this project, um, the tent living, which is even smaller than where I am now, it just wasn't uh, as comfortable anymore. Maybe I'm getting old or any of a number of reasons, but um, I just, it was time to make it, get some more comforts like a heater and uh, some water and um, having some light at night and a stereo and, and things that the solar, which is for those that don't have it out there, it's just so nice to have, you wake up 10 o'clock in the morning and everything's charged and you have all your devices charged and, and no effort on your part whatsoever. It's just, it's, it's really amazing uh, what that can do. If only that could translate over to the larger houses like mine here, um, that would be awesome, but we're, we're just not there yet. But anyway, uh, getting back to the travel, I, you see a lot of things when you're out there and you see a lot of people live with a lot less than we have here. And uh, you just get to a point where you, decisions need to be made. And my decisions were all small, and that changed when I got married. But that's, that's that, that happens, and I would not trade that for, any, for anything. Um, I lived in a series of small apartments after college, um, basement apartments mostly, because I was always out, I was always doing things. Um, we call it now living out of the van. And uh, that's what I did with all of my living quarters. I lived out of them. I was rarely there to be there. 
I slept and I ate and I was out. And that's, that's how I still mostly am today. Um, then I bought my first house, which probably was the, it was a learning experience, but it was the worst thing for me. I, uh, I bought it and I fixed it up the way I wanted it, but I, like I said, I almost never used most of it. I was by myself. I, I had girlfriends, but I, no, uh, serious li nobody lived with me there. So it was nice, but it was, it was just me. And it was one person with a 1,400 square foot house, hot tub, nice garage shop, um, nice outdoor activity area. I made it really nice, but uh, it seemed like a waste. Luckily, I, I fixed it up enough, I sold it, and I made some money, and that, that worked out well. But um, I went from there to an even smaller apartment. I mean, this was tiny. And I was happy there. I was there for three years. And uh, probably would still be there to this day and living in the van part-time, traveling around a lot more, had I not met my wife at that time. And uh, when I met my wife, I, that was one of the happiest days of my life. And, uh, but she's into bigger things. And she, she had rental properties. She uh, had a pretty big house. It, it was a total coincidence, the house we live in now. When I was in high school, we lived, it's a nice park called the Glamour area here in Greeley, Colorado. And uh, when I was in high school, right before I graduated, I lived on the other side of this park, nice house, right before my parents got divorced. And uh, when we met, she had just bought this house on the other side of the park and was intending to flip it until we got together and we hit it off so well and loved Glamour, both of us, and the gardening and all the things that we do. And uh, so we decided to keep it and we moved in. And um, very happy. And this is my shop behind the house where I do um, a lot of work that with the bigger tools, table saws and whatnot, that I can't move in my trailer. And uh, so that leads to the next day. My work is I've been an electrician for a long time, 23 years now. And uh, I do woodworking and we flip houses. and have the rental properties, which we've added to since we've been married. And, um, so it'd be very hard for me to live the small life in a van now. I have, I noticed many of the, the van guys on YouTube, uh, from Justin Credible to uh, Campervan Kevin to uh, even Wanderlust Estate, they all have these places they go where things get done, work on the van or friends that have tools and garages or all those things. and that. And that's fine, but I, if you have tools and you work with your hands, it's very hard to live small um, because you need the tools. And if that's how you make your living, um, I don't know how I would do it. I guess you could pull a trailer behind your van with, with a lot of tools, but things like table saws, um, big toolbox, I mean, it, it would be very difficult to uh, make a living doing what I'm doing now and live in a van. It'd be very hard. So I'm very happy for what I have. I feel very fortunate. But I would not trade it for that. Like I said, if things go really terrible, God forbid. Um, even then, I don't know. The van I have now would not be a living type van. I'd have to, maybe the Explorers or something that size, you could, because you'd have to have a bathroom and a, and a shower and all those amenities that they have, which I don't have right now. But uh, I am looking into it. The compost and toilet idea is very, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to make that work because that sounds pretty neat. But anyway, <coughs> um, future plans, I just, I, I keep working on the van and I, I love to take it out. We're going to be taking it out here later this month. The wife and I will be her first time in it. And uh, we'll see where that goes. I could see in the future one, Something I've always wanted to do is uh, is build a, a camper like the van on a Unimog chassis. I'd love to do that. That'd be a little bit bigger money, a little, a lot more work. So, I'm, but I'm, I think that would be something really neat here in Colorado with the mountains and all the off-road stuff we have available to us. Um, I can see that being a really neat thing to have here. Um, not so good for highway driving, but I can see that's a project I've been thinking about. And I'd also wouldn't mind doing um, 
the Explorers had me really, uh, I really like that layout, I really like the size, and I wouldn't mind uh, fixing up that from everybody from Explorer Steve to Just Incredible to now a simple kid and, and uh, these guys that have these. I really like that layout and you don't want to jump too much on any one bandwagon. Um, but I really do like that layout and that, that might be something I'd be interesting to do later um, after I retire from riding off-road and things like that. Maybe that'd be something later on in life. But anyway, that's how I got from there to here. And I uh, thought I'd put this up because I, it's raining again, and it looks so far away to get up in the mountains. I can't wait to get up, but it, Mother Nature just isn't cooperating this year. It's going to be a rough year to try and get out there, but um, we're going to go at the end of this month, take the van up to the mountains and not ride, just the wife and I. And uh, with the four-wheel drive, I think we'll be okay to get into where I want to go, but it's going to be an adventure, so we'll see. And at least then I'll have some, some real reconnaissance on how the conditions are, even though with the flooding we're experiencing down here and the mountains are all still white with snow, even the close mountains, forget forget about the ones that are further in that are higher and, and there's more snow back there. So it's it's I know it's going to be a, a slow crawl this year. And uh, well, we'll do what we can do, but I... I until then, uh, just keep our fingers crossed that things warm up enough that we can get out there. And uh, at any rate, I will see you on the next video.